And the Lord is exhorting us in this regard, my dear friends. Listen. You're in the world. Be a light. Share your faith. Love the unbeliever. Use your... See, you guys have an advantage that I don't. See, I'm a, I'm a pastor and a professor. You know what it means? It means that as a pastor, I just see Christian people all the time. And as a professor, I'm at the seminary with all these other Christian guys that I hope they're Christian guys. You know, so I just see Christians all the time. I have to go out of my way to bump into a pagan. One day I woke up and I said, you know what? Even my barber's a Christian. <laughs> Fooey on this barber. So I canceled the Christian barber and went out and just walked into any barber shop and found me a pagan barber. <laughs> look at me. Look at my hair. Look at my hair. Huh? You know, but the man's coming to church now. He comes every single Sunday. Not, he hasn't professed faith in Christ. But he's there every single Sunday. You've got to go out of your way, my dear friends. Let's shine for Christ. Let's get somebody saved around this place, true or not. Let's act like men as we go out and evangelize the world. That is our responsibility. That is our purpose. Number three. Act responsibly in the world. Act responsibly in the world. The great threat to civilization as we know it is that men are abandoning the role of being responsible men. That's why our prisons are jam-packed with men, people. We're bulging at the seams with men that are in jails. You know, we have broken families. Every place you go, there's a tsunami coming our way, a tsunami I spoke to a preschool a director not too long ago, and she says, you know, she says, she says, Pastor Montoya, in our school, there are no whole families. Every child there is either from a single parent or from parents that are not that child's parents to begin with. There's nobody in the preschool that is a holistic family. There's a tsunami coming our way. What is happening? Men have stopped being responsible for their families. We have feminized churches. We have a, a society, a society that is sissified, sissified. And we, you know, Brother Mike and Brother Phil are going to be addressing these issues. But we need to be able to put into our lives, my friends, these traits of responsibility. Two of these that are very important. The issue of courage that Brother John spoke about so well this morning, so eloquently, the issue of courage. What courage really means is overcoming your fears. Listen, all of us are afraid of something. If I was to examine your life carefully, you're afraid of something, are you not? We're all afraid of something. We all have a phobia. See, courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is overcoming fear. You know, to play the man. That's what the word means. Play the man. Montoya, play the man. Play the man. That's what it means. Don't, you're afraid, but listen, overcome your fears. Stand up and play the man. That's what it means, my friend. We all have fears. And it means for you and I to stand in spite of our fears and be responsible for all the areas that God has called us to be responsible for. I mean, I have a, I have a, I have arachnophobia like you would not believe. That's afraid of spiders. Yeah. And my wife knows that. She knows that. And she's, you know, she's all lady. She's all dainty, you know, and, and she'll say, honey, honey, come quick, quick. There's a spider here. Kill it. Yeah. Why don't you kill it? No, you're the man. Yeah, you're the man. So now I'm the man. Huh? And do I kill it? I feel like killing her first, you know. But I, I kill it. I kill it, you know. And I go and I, and I get that thing and I work with it. You know? But see, you, you, need to, you need to overcome these fears, fellas. Responsibility, marriage, children, ministry, all of that. 
It also means sacrifice. Sacrifice. It means women and children first. We forget about that. See, our biggest problem, fellows, is we get sissified. We're we're big-time sissies. And we sometimes think that they're out there, but you know, sometimes they're right in here. It's always, well, what about me? Well, what about me? Well, what about my needs, Alex? What about my desires, Alex? You know, you know, I, I, I don't have a new car, and, and I don't have this, and I don't have that, and I don't have this, and well, what about, what about me? What about me, Alex? <laughs> you know, we're crying that all the time. You know, friend, it's, that's, for a man, for a man, that's, that's gone. For a man, it's sacrifice. And that's what it means to play the man. Be willing to sacrifice for others, for your wife, for your children, for your church, for your culture. I had a father that used to work graveyard. And I can recall on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve he would have his, his huge boots on, his work clothes on and his jacket on and 11.35, 11.40, he'd be there talking to us. And then at midnight, he'd leave the house. Midnight Christmas Eve, he'd, be, he'd get his middle lunch box and walk out the door and say goodbye to us and go off to do a 8 to 10 hour shift. You know, he never cried about that. He never sat there weeping. He didn't call him sick because he didn't want to go in. See, he was a man. He was a man's man. He never said, what about me? What about me? And our problem today is we're always, what about me? What about my desires? What are my, my, my goals and my ambitions and my etc.? cetera? 